Well, welcome today to uh, the latest video blog from Socialist.net. Uh, I'm joined here today by Ben Glenetsky, the editor of the MarxistStudent.com website and regular writer for Socialist.net and Marxist.com, who's going to be speaking to us today about the uh, events in Thailand taking place. So, Ben, just to begin, um, can you basically tell us what's, uh, what, what are the recent events in Thailand? What's been happening lately? Yeah, well, um, over the last six months or so, the government of uh, Yingluck Shiawatra, uh, which was elected in 2011, July 2011, has been facing protests uh, from largely urban, kind of petty bourgeois middle class layers, uh, centred in Bangkok, in fact almost exclusively in Bangkok. Um, and these protests, uh, these protesters have been calling for the government's resignation and for uh, a, an unelected People's Council, as they call it, to be installed, uh, with the sole aim, more or less, of uh, purging uh, Yingluck and her party's influence from Thai politics. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this, uh, despite dwindling numbers of protesters, this culminated last week with uh, what is effectively a judicial coup where uh, the Constitutional Court removed Yingluck and nine of her ministers, uh, her cabinet ministers, which leaves basically a, uh, a truncated cabinet in power in Thailand at the moment. It hasn't satisfied the protesters who want the whole party removed and this unelected People's Council to take power. Um, so the protests are still going on. Yingluck is rallying her supporters, who are largely uh, rural, peasant-based uh, supporters. And at the moment, the whole situation is, uh, is in limbo. Great, thanks. Uh, can you maybe give us a bit more background to these events, going back uh, a few more years? Mm, yeah, uh, the background is very important, uh, because in, uh, in 2001, uh, Yingluck's brother, Thaksin, uh, was elected in the most uh, open and corruption-free elections ever held in Thailand um, on, a, on an anti-neoliberal programme, on an anti-IMF um, programme. The IMF had been intervening in the economy since the Asian financial crisis of 1997, uh, cutting public spending and uh, implementing neoliberal policies across the board. And, uh, and Thaksin ran in the 2001 election on a program of uh, free universal health care, uh, more money for the rural areas, uh, and so on. And unsurprisingly, he uh, won the overwhelming support of the peasantry in Thailand and was elected. Um, because of this mass support, the, uh, the kind of hostile elements, the monarchist, uh, royalist elements in uh, the Thai establishment were unable to, uh, to remove him in their traditional fashion, which is to use a coup against those people they don't like. That's been the case in Thailand uh, since about 1932, uh, where coups have been used to remove uh, opposition populist elements. Um, <clears throat> so Thaksin was able then to win a second election in 2005, again on the back of a, a movement of the peasantry, uh, where he has a lot of support. Now in 2006, Thaksin was removed uh, by a coup. Uh, finally, the, the establishment, the royalist elements, uh, got their act together and removed him in 2006. Um, and since then, there has been extreme instability uh, in Thailand uh, and uh, conflict between Taksin supporters, who are the red shirts, and the monarchist royalist uh, supporters, supporters of the establishment, the urban, petty bourgeois, middle class layers, who are the yellow shirts. Um, and, uh, and this conflict reached, uh, reached boiling point, reached tipping, tipping point in 2010 uh, when, um, following a, another judicial coup in 2008, a yellow shirt supported uh, government was in power. And then in 2010, the red shirt protesters uh, occupied uh, areas of Bangkok. Uh, it was a massive movement, uh, largely based on the peasantry, but it obviously spread into the, into the city. And, uh, and there was a large move of elements of dual power emerged and, uh, and but for the uh, prevarications of the leadership of the Red Shirts, uh, there would have been a, a successful revolution in Thailand at that time. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, to, on the basis of those events, the ruling class was forced to concede elections in 2011, which Ying Luck uh, did win on the basis of her closeness to Thaksin again on the back of a massive peasant uh, vote. And the conflict has been simmering since then, the ruling class just looking for their chance to strike back against the red shirt movement. 
Great, thanks to that. Uh, can you maybe give us a bit more of a detailed explanation about the different class interests involved in all this? I mean, on the one hand, you, you've mentioned the red shirts being uh, based mainly upon the peasants, um, I, from what I understand, in the north of the country. Uh, but then the, the yellow shirts are the kind of monarchist elements and, uh, and more urban uh, middle classes. Uh, but then you've also got the added complication of the Sinawatras, who themselves are, are very rich, uh, and actually uh, Thaksin being a media tycoon himself. Can you maybe explain a bit more about these different uh, interests involved? Yeah, absolutely, because it is, uh, although this, what's going on in Thailand at the moment does express uh, different class interests, it is being expressed in quite a peculiar, uh, unusual way, because as you say, um, the Shirwatras are, are billionaires, they're, uh, for, to all intents and purposes, they're, they're representatives of the bourgeoisie. Um, and it looks on the surface like you simply have one, uh, one faction of, of the ruling class uh, leaning on the peasantry just in order to fight another faction uh, of the ruling class, and it doesn't seem to be much deeper than that. But um, it's important to, uh, to realise, kind of going back even further with the history of Thailand, that uh, because of the nature of, of Thai society and politics, uh, that being a, a largely peasant-based uh, country, and also pol political movements being consistently stunted by uh, coups and military intervention and so on uh, in the history of the of, of the politics in Thailand, it means that a uh, an independent workers and peasants party has never had a chance, uh, or a movement of, of any kind, has never really had a chance to crystallise. Uh, and until 2001, the peasants had never seen anybody, any politician, ever stand up for their interests. It had always just been changes in the ruling clique uh, that, uh, that oppressed them and, and, and so on in, in various different ways. So in 2001, when uh, Thaksin, this, this billionaire uh, telecommunications tycoon, uh, actually started offering, um, some, something, offering to fight, basically, for the interests of the, of the peasantry, uh, they they had never seen anything like this before, and, and naturally they decided to to vote for Thaksin and, are, and were willing in two thousand and ten to come out and fight uh, for pro Thaksin parties. Um, and so whether he uh, in many ways is Thaksin and, and Yingluck as well, the pro Thaksin parties basically, despite their bourgeois uh, credentials, they're all, they're more or less accidental figures in this movement, uh, perhaps un, unwittingly and perhaps unwillingly they are actually expressing uh, the, the desire for a fundamental change of the vast majority of people in Thailand. Um, and because of the lack of a, a, a historical workers' movement or peasant movement, that hasn't been able to express itself in any other way, so it's expressing itself like this. And on the other side, you have the yellow shirts, the very reactionary monarchy, the monarchy being, uh, it's a constitutional monarchy in Thailand, and the monarchy there is very much the rallying point of reaction. Uh, they've always been involved with the uh, with the the coup attempts and the removal and oppression of uh, progressive forces. Uh, so you really have uh, the pro Thaksin parties representing the anti-establishment uh, desire for change, and the yellow shirts, the monarchists, uh, representing the the counter the, the the reaction, the counter revolution. Thanks. And finally, can you maybe outline what you think are uh, the perspectives for Thailand now? Um, are we going to see a, an actual coup with the military coming in, potentially civil war? Or do you think that there's even uh, potential for, for revolution here? Mm, yeah, that's, uh, that's an important question. Um, <clears throat> clearly, uh, we're in a state of limbo at the moment, but clearly the protesters would, uh, would welcome military intervention at this stage. Uh, they are consistently trying to destabilise the whole country, um, occupying government buildings, shutting down uh, government meetings. Just, uh, just yesterday, I think, a uh, government meeting, or a meeting between the, the interim prime minister, now that Yingluck has been removed, a meeting between that prime minister and the electoral, electoral commission, uh, was disrupted by uh, protesters, meaning that uh, they're unable to proceed with plans for, a, for an election uh, that has been scheduled provisionally for the 20th of July this year. Um, many people don't think that election is going to go ahead precisely because the, uh, the yellow shirts are disrupting things and trying to get the military to intervene. Uh, but we'll have to see about that, that's, that's not clear. Um, the reason the military hasn't intervened so far and the, the thing that's going to be holding it back in the future in terms of, this, of the prospects for a coup 
is actually it's fear and it's scared of, uh, it remembers the events of 2010 when large parts of Bangkok and the country as a whole were occupied by red shirt protesters. It was only due to a weak leadership uh, that, that that movement uh, failed to completely remove uh, the monarchy and uh, other elements of the establishment. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and they don't want to spark that kind of movement again. And, uh, and they're well aware that the red shirts themselves have learned the lessons from 2010. And they will come back, the movement will come back on a much higher level this time, if and when it's rekindled. So the military are going to hesitate uh, before they, they have a coup. But it may, it may well be that there's, they have little choice. In terms of uh, what the red shirts are likely to do next, well, uh, the peasant population in the north is not going to, be, is not going to accept uh, the actions of the yellow shirts. They won't accept a coup, uh, and they certainly won't accept a, an unelected people's council taking over from a government that they themselves elected in 2011. They certainly won't accept that, and there's all kinds of uh, interviews with people in the north who have said as much. But, uh, but the leaders of the red shirts, and Yingluck in particular, even though she's now been removed from power, ousted, has been hesitant to, to call the red shirts into action. They had a demonstration uh, recently, the last few days, uh, but it was about 40 kilometres away from the centre of Bangkok, 40 kilometres away from where the opposition demonstrations were. They're keeping them very separate. And this, uh, this I think, is actually because Yingluck herself is also afraid of the potential power of that movement. She herself, as I've said, is not a, not a worker or a peasant. She's not, she's not a leader of them in that sense. She's an accidental figure, afraid of the kind of forces that she's capable of conjuring up. And so she's going to hesitate before she calls out the red shirts uh, because she, she's afraid of conjuring up forces that then she won't be able to control. So really, uh, if there is to be a, a, a solution, an answer for the red shirts to avoid a coup and to avoid the unelected People's Council purging all the progressive uh, elements from Thai politics, they're not socialist elements clearly, but they are, they are certainly progressive. Yingluck, for example, has implemented various rice subsidy schemes that have benefited the peasants enormously. And, uh, and the yellow shirts, the monarchists, they want to get rid of all these things. The only uh, option that the red shirts really have in the face of uh, Yingluck being paralysed by fear of her own supporters, is to, is to take control of the movement themselves and, ha and, uh, and build an independent workers and peasants movement, link up with the working class in the cities, which uh, although it exists, it hasn't been active really at all, uh, hasn't played an independent role certainly in the recent uh, events. So that's really, really what needs to happen. And, uh, and what's clear as well is that if that does happen based on the events of 2010, then you do have very, very revolutionary potential. You do have very clear potential for, uh, for an overthrow of, uh, of the existing order. And, uh, and they're aware of this. The, the, ex the establishment is aware of this and they're, they're afraid of it, which is why uh, the yellow shirts are insisting on uh, this as quickly as possible this uh, unelected People's Council to try and purge all these progressive elements from Thai politics. Um, so uh, really the question comes down to the subjective factor. Uh, it requires independent movement, a clear socialist program, um, demands for the abolition of the monarchy, uh, a new constitution be written uh, that allows proper representation uh, in some form of constituent assembly uh, from all areas of Thailand. And, uh, and that's really the only way that uh, the workers and peasants are going to be able to mobilise themselves uh, in, a, in any kind of revolutionary movement. Thank you very much, Ben. Thanks for joining us today, and uh, speak to you soon. Bye.